So the next speaker, a uh, former uh, Major General, Professor Yisha Baer. Um, he was a Professor Baer. He's also a law professor in the Hebrew. In the past, he was in the Hebrew uni University. Today, he works uh, at Reichman University. And he was a commander of a, regim a regiment and the head of the military um, court. Thank you. So two statements um, make this uh, the whole discussion seem redundant. So we have the most moralist, moralistic uh, uh, army in the world. That's it. But uh, some might add another statement there about the UN. So they both represent the public opinion, the Israeli public opinion, when it comes to the question. So if you want to think further about this question beyond these statements, I think that we need to think about two levels. The first level is uh, moral moral uh, aspects that uh, the IDF should adhere to when it acts outside of Israel. And the second level is it's the same uh, principles and limitations that the IDF should follow when it fights. So let's start with the first level. We all think about the IDF. It's about territorial army that fights within a territory, but it's not true. For example, so there are military operations outside of the boundaries. For example, the operation we had in, in at Antebi, or if you wish, if I so if I speak about the security establishment, think about Eichmann, uh, when we call Eichmann or Vanunu, all of these acts were uh, were conducted outside of Israel, but they still were uh, there were certain moral limitations that apply to them. Another another uh, example: Intel intelligence. Intel is a coalition. We have several countries that are our partner. For example, England that tells the whole world publicly in Parliament through very um, uh, various legislation that it will cooperate with countries only if those countries um, um, respect uh, human rights. So we also have to think about it because of this coalition. So I'll give you another example, a third example. So it a bit deviates from the boundaries of this uh, uh, discussion, but it has to do with security aid or selling arms to other countries. When it, when it comes to security aids or selling arms, we do not want to be perceived as a country that sells um, arms to uh, Tyrant. For example, in Africa, we don't want to be caught selling the software of Pegasus to the bad guys. So we have to actually obey certain moral obligations because when it comes to selling arms, uh, it's not kinetic arms, but this is um, maybe it could be in cyber, but it's also similar. So this is the first level I'd like to refer to military activity outside of Israel um, in a third circle. And if you wish, um, um, airways. So we do not, our Air Force is active not only in within Israel. They cross the, boor b the borders. They are active in other countries, the Air Force force, the Air Force. And we might uh, actually um, endanger countries which are not our enemies. And we have to make an effort to minimize damage. So it means that, according to foreign publications, uh, the IDF forces or Air Force acted in Sudan, for example. In order to get to Sudan, you need to cross several other countries. And they're not necessarily, they don't necessarily welcome us when we don't want to undermine their sovereignty. So these were a few examples about the activity of the IDF outside of the State of Israel and its influence, moral, 
or moral considerations. But now let's get to the, uh, uh, to the main point, the main level, the IDF's activity, daily activity. To what extent should it be affected by international aspects? So with your permission, I'd like to claim that it, it should be influenced by international aspects and influence them. And in this sense, maybe we should start with the basic argument uh, of Michael, Professor Michael, who wrote about it in his book. He wrote, every just war, every war which is just, every war when you defend yourself is a justified war, projects some uh, negative sides. Although we intuitively think about uh, war as a war over territory, Professor Walters says it's not necessarily so. Wars affect everybody in the world. And of course, a war which is pure aggressiveness and unjustified war, it poisons the whole world. It affects the whole world. In this sense, maybe we want to propose an analogy or the metaphor, which is really obvious. Think about air pollution. It crosses boundaries. So a war which is unjustified, aggressive war, ac according to Walter, Professor Walter, is a war which pollutes the whole world. So this is one aspect, but it, this aspect is true for any country. And now let's get to the bottom of it. To what extent does the, uh, the Israel's fight against uh, uh, against its enemy justified war? We hope that we are always do it for we always do it for the right reasons. To what extent does it affect or should affect the third? other countries. And here, I'd like to refer you to the spirit of uh, IDF. These are the ethical rules of IDF, embraced by IDF, which allow it to perform its mission while maintaining its values, its moral values or adhering to its moral outfit. In the IDF spirit, there are, there, there, it, it includes values that are relevant to IDF soldiers, but are relevant to the entire world. So in the IDF spirit document, in the introduction, they mention where IDF's ethics was invented. The uh, military ethics was taken from the IDF's heritage, from the Jewish people heritage, as was formed for thousands of years from the values of the state of Israel, which is a democratic Jewish state, and pay attention to the, to the fourth point, from universal ethics based on human dignity. So in this sense, the IDF spirit says, we actually import universal values into and integrate them into the IDF spirits. And we do not have to be ashamed because when we fight our just wars, we export these morals elsewhere to other countries. Now think for a minute about the war, the, 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 the current war, Ukraine and Russia. It's a war of attrition, but it's in an urban region. It involves civilians. In order to reach military achievements, um, every day between 50 to 100 people are killed. These are innocent citizens. Now let's take the purity of arms as it's reflected in IDF spirit. The soldier will use its weapon in, and will remain a human being. It, the soldier will not harm people who are not soldiers and do everything in his power to prevent from hurting them or harming or their body, their body or soul. So purity of arms doesn't mean that civilians are not killed in wars. It means that you need to make all efforts to prevent it, to prevent harming 
innocent people. That's the statement. We need to make this effort. We need to distinguish between soldiers and civilians. So when we are witnessing this war of attention in Russia, they killed civilians. They bomb hospitals, all those uh, pure civil targets, which become military targets. And we, sh they should actually think about role models. We think we have to show them a role model and to tell them that purity of arms is very important. And we should show the whole world how countries should fight in urban territories where civilians and soldiers um, are involved. We want to give them the world of, the, we want to give them the example, the example of Zion. Thank you very much.